Hello, good morning. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. So this is just an Old Testament parable. Um, Jesus, he talked about this in also parables in the New Testament. And a lot of this prophecy has to do with all of us, really. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes before I get into it. I'm going to be reading from an amplified version. And we're going to be reading in Isaiah chapter 5. But before we go to that, I want to finish, I want to um, read Romans 11, 11 uh, through uh, 36. So just a heads up. We're talking about Jesus here, and if you don't like that, then you have to get going, because we're talking about, we're talking about the truth, and life, and that he came here to, for us to have it abundantly. I don't want, I don't want any not negative comments. If, if you can try, you know, you can stick around, but please... I don't go up on, on your page. I don't, you know, say negative things. So, I'll wait a few minutes. Then I'm going to read from Romans chapter 11. And there's a reason why I'm going to read from Romans. And I will bring this up to you guys as we're reading Isaiah. Okay, so that I made the title for the live called the uh, Vineyard Yielding Wild Grapes. We are that wild uh, branch that's grafted in. So good morning. So good morning. I'm not really sure what you're trying to say, uh, Douglas, as judge. Um, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Uh, good morning. And we're going to go into Romans chapter 11. So I picked for the background uh, grapes. Now, this is a prophecy. It's not just a parable in the Old and the New Testament. This is this is a matter of life and death for both Jew and Gentile. And we are living in the last days, and there is proof of that as we continue. To, every day we draw near to the end. Every day. Every day when you look at technology and science and where things are going in this world, this is not normal and this has not been seen um, this has not been seen. This is new. Although scripture says nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. That's how we know we're drawing into the last days. There's the, we're reaching at an all time high with technology and all that, and all this stuff. And it says in the book of Revelations, they will seek death and not find it. So I do believe that technology and science will get to that point. So um, I'm going to read from Romans. So the title is, um, I wrote down the title, The Vineyard Yielding Wild Grapes. So we're going to go into Romans chapter 11, um, 11. So I asked, have they stumbled so as to fall to their utter spiritual ruin, inverbably? By no means, but through their false steps and transgressions. This is just talking about the Jewish people. All right, and then we're going to go into Isaiah chapter 5, and I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to bring you also into a parable that Jesus was talking about in uh, Matthew 21. Okay, they, the Bible begin, begins to speak 
and explains to you what Jesus is talking about. And that's what he was sharing with me this morning. And I'm going to share that with you guys. So, um, by no means, but through their false step and transgressions, um, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Salvation has come to the Gentiles. So as to arouse Israel to see and feel what they forfeited. And so to make them jealous. Now, if they're stumbling, they're uh, lapsing, their transgression has so in, um, enriched the world at a large. And if Israel, if Israel is failure, means much riches for the Gentiles, think what an enrichment and greater advance will follow their uh, reinstatement. Re they'll be reinstated. Okay, now I know I'm a little, you know, I said I was going to read Isaiah chapter 5, but we're doing this kind of backwards. Uh, the Hebrews, they read backwards, so we're doing it backwards. Okay, so by now I am speaking to you who are Gentiles in such much than as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I lay great stress on my ministry and magnify uh, my office in the hope of making my fellow Jews jealous in order to stir them up to intimate copy and um, um, appro appropriate um, appropriate and thus managing to save some of them okay so Paul was zealous for the law okay and he becomes and he also was a murderer to Christians then he becomes a Christian and so he has his own experience with Christ we all have to have our own experience in Christ uh, we should all desire to touch the hem of the garment we should all have a desire to have our own personal story, our own personal testimony. So Paul got to have his own testimony with Jesus Christ. And um, they have rejected the truth. And therefore, um, because of this, they we provoke them to jealousy. Um, but then we also should be humble. We should not be, um, you know, thinking of ourselves any better, because we're really not. If you really want to think about it, we are just like they are um, in some ways. So in the hope of making my fellow uh, Jews jealous in order to stir them up to imitate, copy, and appropriate, and thus managing to save some of them, for if their resurrection and um, ex, um, exclusion from the uh, benefits of salvation were overruled for the reconciliation of a world to God, what will their um, acceptance and omission mean? It will be nothing sh uh, short of life from the dead. So now if the first handful of dough offered as the first fruits, Abraham and the patriarchs, is consecrated holy, so is the whole mass, the nations of Israel. So is the whole. I really love how the Amplified uh, version goes. Okay, let me just read this one more time. This is a uh, Romans eleven uh, sixteen. So if now if the first handful of dough offered as the first fruits. Abraham and the patriarchs is consecrated holy so is the whole mass the nation of Israel and if the root Abraham is consecrated holy so are the branches and we're going to get into that but if some of the branches were broken off while you a wild olive um, shoot were an o wild olive shoot were grafted in among them to share the rich of the root and the sap of the olive tree do not boast do not boast over the branches we are grafted in do not boast okay and pride yourself 
sometimes we pride ourselves over other believers and 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 what we think it oh I'm more right I have more understanding than you do and then they condemn people because of that we're on all different levels in Christ because God it he gets all the glory it's not about you know he gets all the glory it's not about where you're at it's what he's doing in your life it's not about you it's what he's doing in your life so do not boast over the branches and pride yourself at their expense and if you do boast and feel superior uh, remember it is not you that supports um, you know it supports remember it is not you that supports the root but the root that supports you you will say uh, then branches were broken, pruned off, so that I might be grafted in. That is true. But they were broken, pruned off because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. They did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Neither the, the Muslims. They don't believe. They believe that he's just a prophet. And Jesus, I mean, and the Jews, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That is why they were pruned. That is why they were cut. Okay? Uh, because of the lack of their their lack of real faith. You know, and you are established through faith because you do believe. So do be uh, do not become proud and conceited. Okay? Going through the fruits of the spirit. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious. It's not proud. It does not boast. Okay, so if you're operating in boastfulness, if you're operating in proud and conceited, this is really something to really look at because I myself struggle at times. I'm not perfect. But through Christ, He can perfect and He can He can change my mind. You know, He can change. That's what renewing of your mind in the Word of God. You're supposed to read the Word be, so you can be thoroughly equipped for every good work so that you can change your mind on what you're about to do the word of God will come in and bring something into remembrance to thoroughly equip you for every good work so do not become proud or conceited but rather stand in awe and and uh, be reverent, reverently afraid okay why because if if God can take his own chosen people and cut off that branch, he can do that to us as well. So we should have a healthy fear of the Lord. So for if God did not spare the natural branches because of their unbelief, neither will he spare you if you are guilty of any um, of, of the same offense. So this is what they did. Okay, then note and appreciate the gracious kindness and the um, uh, severity of God, the severity towards those who have fallen. Okay, if we truly believe in God, we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we know the price that was we that um, was paid. We should be serving God. Um, you know, with uh, severity, severity, this is urgent, you know, this is urgent, we should set free the captives, set free the captives, for we were once captive ourselves, so we should, um, you know, the, the severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, you know, but God's grace, kindness to you provided you continue in his grace, Continue in his grace and abide in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off and pruned away. So this has a lot. Paul is talking about Isaiah chapter 5. And we'll also see that Jesus is also in Matthew chapter uh, 21. He is also talking about Isaiah. And he rebukes his disciples because they did not know the scriptures. So this is important. The parable of the fig tree is to know political um, political Israel so you would know the season the time and also the parable to know the parable the Lord Jesus Christ 
rebukes the disciples for not knowing a parable from the Old Testament. So the Holy Spirit has brought me into parables of the Old Testament. I wasn't really sure what was going on here, but I became curious. Uh, and that's the Holy Spirit. He will lead you into all truths. And I want to see him everywhere. And I became curious, is he in the Old Test like old Old Testament parables? And he is in every single one. And all the parables are linked. They're all linked. They're all parallels. And they're all a story about God's creation. They're all about a story about God's creation. Um, so, and even those, okay, so I'm going to continue to read Romans chapter 11, uh, 23. Even those others, the fallen branches, Jews, if they did not persist and cling to, clinging to, okay, think about Mary. She literally was sitting at Jesus' side, and when, when she even goes, uh, to the tomb when Jesus you know raised from the grave he, he says let go of me woman you know basically go and tell the others what you have seen you know she held on him to him he she clung to him and that is a a character that we need to have for ourselves we need to cling on to Jesus Christ you know um, they did not cling to their unbelief will be um, their unbelief will be grafted in, for God has the power of grafting them in again. So God has the power to graft them in. He has the power to graft you out. So it is He who who has the power, not ourselves. So for if you have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and against nature grafted into cultivated olive tree how much easier will it be to be grafted these natural branches back on the original parent stock of their their own olive tree so least you be self-opinionated wise in your own conceits i do not want you to miss this hidden truth and mystery brethren i a a harding a hardening um, insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come until the full number of the um, ingathering of the Gentiles has come I believe that's strong very close I believe that it's at the door like I feel the Holy Spirit we're here so and so all Israel will be saved as it is written the deliverer will come from Zion he will banish ungodliness from Jacob and this will be my covenant my agreement with them when I shall take away their sins we can see this in Isaiah chapter 27 and 9 and Jeremiah 31 uh, 33 from the point of view of the gospel the good news they the Jews at present are enemies of God which is for your advantage and benefit but from the point of view of God's cho cho uh, choice of elect and of divine selection they are still the beloved dear to him for the sake of their forefathers for God's gift gifts and his call are um, irreversible they, they're irreversible and he never withdraws uh, them when uh, once they are given and he does not change his mind our God is not like a uh, man where we change our mind when he says something he will do he is faithful and he will do so to to whom he gives his grace of to whom he sends his call just as you were once disobedient and rebellious towards God, but now have obtained his mercy through their disobedience. Because of their disobedience, you have attained um, mercy. So they are now are uh, disobedient. So when you are receiving mercy, they 
in turn may one day through the mercy you are enjoying also receive mercy so one day the jews will receive mercy they will be grafted at back in um that's where we get the hundred and forty four thousand in the book of revelations these are those who hold on to the testimony of jesus christ and the law and the law so um and they are they're pure and holy and in the book of revelations god puts um he puts uh, a mark on them on their forehead which says most holy to the lord do not touch you know like when, when we get to the tribulation this is a seal from god do not you, you know the devil is not allowed to touch you so um for god has consigned uh painted up all men to disobedience only that he may have mercy on them all alike on the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of god how unfathomable um ins unsearchable all are are his judgments um his decisions and how untangible mysterious undiscoverable are his ways his methods his paths you know who can know uh, God's thoughts nobody knows you know for who knows who has known the mind of the Lord and who has understood his thoughts or who has ever uh, been his counselor you know or who has first given God anything that he might be paid back or that he could reclaim um, a a rec a rec um, per, uh, permits for from him and through him and to him are all things for all things ordinate with him and come um, from him all things live through him and all things center in him and tend to him uh, consummate and to an end in him to him be the glory forever and ever amen and it says so be it so be it which in hebrew means amen means so be it so now uh after we have read this we are the olive that wild olive branch so what now when we go back to read isaiah chapter 5 we'll understand this a little bit better and then i'll bring us back into the new testament so isaiah chapter 5 and I'll explain what these symbols are. Rep they're just symbols, but they represent the people. Um, so here's the parable in Isaiah chapter 5. Let me, as God's representative, this is Isaiah speaking, uh, sing of and for my greatly beloved. Now, as I was reading this, there are some cross-reference, and I went to go look up the cross-reference ver verses. And this is a Song of Solomon 3, I mean 6-3, so we'll look at that really quick too. So let me, as God's representative, sing of and for my greatly beloved son, the God, a tender song of my beloved concerning his vineyard, his chosen people, my greatly beloved had a vineyard and on a very fruitful hill. So this is mentioned in Song of, of Solomon, which is 6, 3. Okay. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul went forth to him. And when he spoke, but it failed me. And now he was gone. And I sought him, and I could not find him. I called him, and he gave me no answer. So as I was reading this, I was thinking about the five, the five unwise versions. These are the five on, in the last days. Um, you know, Jesus has given judgment to the seven churches. As I was looking at when God was pouring out his wrath, Jesus says something, it's in red letters, he, he says something, it's a rebuke, 
um, that he said to one of the churches. So it is possible that one of the churches will receive the mark of the beast and worship its image. It is possible. Uh, they are unrepentant. They are, say they're rich. But then another revelation came to me. I was watching, you know, some other person on um, YouTube who likes to focus on the parables as well um, said that these five unwise virgins were trying to buy oil. Now the oil is the Holy Spirit and these five unwise virgins who you have to pay to get atonement. Which church do you have to pay for atonement? The Catholic Church was paying, you know, you had to pay to make atonements. So, I mean, that, I don't know if that goes, but as I was listening to this guy, I was like, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. The Holy Spirit is the oil. And so there's a lot of people in the Catholic Church probably that goes there and practices, you know, righteousness. You know, they try to practice righteousness. And this is the Jezebel spirit. She practices religion. Um, but she doesn't have a personal relationship with Christ, you know. So, anyways, as I was also reading this, the Song of Solomon, it, it, is, it is very similar of what Isaiah is saying in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Very similar. Song of Solomon 6, 3 is very similar to Isaiah. And the, what it is, is Solomon is speaking about his... They're, they're, it's a, a couple, and they're speaking about each other. Um, but here Isaiah is using what Solomon had spoken. Reference God as the beloved. Um, so let me just read that one more time. So Isaiah 5, 1, 6 says, Let me, as God's representative, sing of and for my greatly beloved God the Son, a tender song of my beloved. God the Son is the beloved. Concerning the vineyard, his chosen people. Uh, my greatly beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Now stop. If you have your Bible, go look at Song of Solomon 6.3. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and withdrawn himself. And he was gone. My soul went forth to him, and when he spoke, but but it failed me. And now he was gone. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, and but he could not give me an answer. So if God had left Saul, Saul in the Old Testament, and also had God, uh, you know, cut the branch off of the Jewish people. And then we go to the book of Revelations, and those who receive Revelation, I'm sorry, those who receive the mark of the beast and worship the image, there is a church that, and I will bring you guys to really quick, um, they're shamefully naked. And when the bowls are being pulled, uh, poured out, Jesus repeats the same rebuke that he said to this one church. I believe this is the cat. Catholic Church. I could be entirely wrong. But then I started thinking about the five unwise versions. They didn't have oil in their lamp. They didn't have intimacy. Um, but they went to go look to, to buy it. To buy it. And the Roman Catholic Church uh, was selling you know, atonement. You had to buy atonements. You had to go through the Father and the father at, at the Catholic Church and you had to pay for atonements. So history repeats itself and this could and, and the mark of the beast could be used in this way. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church could be part of it. Um, I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to continue to read the rest of Isaiah. I want to get too off, off topic here. And you can laugh all you want, but when the time comes, it's not going to be funny. It's not. 
So, okay, so I saw that in so um, Song of Solomon. So now we're going to take a look really quick in Matthew 21, 33 through 40. So, listen to another parable. Jesus is speaking. This is the New Testament. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and he put a hedge around it. There's a hedge of a protection, you know, over us. Um, he put a hedge around it and dug a wine vat in it and he built a watchtower. He built a watchtower and then he went out for it and he rented it. He rented it uh, for rent to uh, tenants and and went to into another country and when the fruit season drew near he sent his servants to the tenants to get his share of fruit but the tenants took his servant servants and beat one and this also remember you know as i'm reading this this reminds me of another parable that jesus was talking about of um the wicked servant you know the servant that goes and beats uh, the uh, unforgiving, uh, the unmerciful servant, the unmerciful servant. See, all the parables are of one, basically. It's a story, but it's all mm -hmm. one. And it's about all of us. Um, so we have to be watchful of these things. And the scriptures are meant for rebuking, correcting, and training. And then it's also good to be thoroughly equipped. It is the armor of God. The scriptures is the armor of God. Um, so when the fruit season drew near, he sent his servants to the tendon to get his share of the fruit. And we're told to have the fruits of the spirit. So, but the tenants took his servant and beat one and killed another and stoned another. And again, he sent another servant more than the first time. And they treated them the same way. These are the prophets. It, this is a story being told. Jesus saying, in, in a story and he says finally he sent his own son so finally he sent his own son who is that Jesus Christ to them saying they will respect and give heed to my son but when the tenants saw the son they said to themselves this is the heir come on let's let's kill him and have his inheritance and they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him and now when the owner of the vineyard comes back what will he do with those tenants what will he do with those tenants so now we're going back to Isaiah chapter 5 2 through 5 so and he dug and trenched the ground and gathered out the stones from it. We were just reading about this in Matthew. So Jesus is talking about a parable in Isaiah and he's explaining it too. So the ground and gathered out the stones from it and planted with the choice wine and built a tower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine press in it and he looked for it to bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes why did it bring forth wild grapes this is a mystery um, and now O inhabitations of Israel and men of Judah judge and I pray you between me and my vineyard my people says the Lord um, what more could have been done for my vineyard um, that I have not done in it. When I looked for it to bring forth grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? We are the wild olive uh, shoot. We are the wild olive, olive shoot. We are the wild um, grapes to this parable that Jesus is talking about here. And also Isaiah is talking about here. And it says, And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge of protection. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be eaten and burned up. 
and I will break down its wells, and it shall be trodden down by its enemies. So back to Matthew twenty-one, forty-one. They said to him, He will put those、um, wretches to a miserable death, and rent the vineyard to other talents. Of such a character, so going back, this is an amplified version. We're told to be, in, we are told to be representatives. How is our character? You know, how do we carry ourselves? He is the author, and we are the characters to the story. So, he gives it over to、uh, other te、uh, another tenant of such a character that they will give him the fruits promptly. In their season, so he was talking about the parable in Isaiah five one through seven. Jesus Christ was talking about that parable. So,、um, we're gonna read John chapter fifteen. So now we're, we're we're everywhere. So, John chapter fifteen. Um, I. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and I just want you guys to see it. So now we're going into John, chapter fifteen, and we're going to go to the fruits of the spirit. So. That's that's the mission here, but there's more. I looked up online this morning. I I was gonna do a little video,、uh, but it didn't it didn't turn out good. So if I have time, I'll show you. But there's more. There is over sixty verses throughout the whole entire Bible about the vineyard, and if I have time, we'll go into some of them. So in John chapter. Um, fifteen. It says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser." So the Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing. Okay, so this is the Amplify version. It is possible to start walking and being on fire because we see this in the church in, in Revelation. There's a church who you could be on fire for the Lord, but then forget your first love. So, in here it says, "Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing." So it is possible that you can stop bearing fruit. That's why we're supposed to work at our fear,、uh, our salvation with fear and trembling, and then take up our cross daily, daily, and to meditate on the Word of God day and night, like David did. David is a great example of you know how we are to be in character with. With our love, with our, with our first love, so he cuts away, he trims off, he takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it more, um, to uh to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. You are cleansed and pruned already. You are cleansed and pruned already. Because of the word, key the word. So the word of God is truly life. It is meant for rebuking, correcting, and training, and healing. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and teach you in the word. That is no wonder why the Roman, also the Roman Catholic Church, was burning Bibles. They did not want people to have. They did not want people to come to the full knowledge of truth. In the Word of God, and and also know that the Holy Spirit can teach you and reveal to you all truths. I don't have anybody, you know, showing me. This is the Holy Spirit showing me、um, how to study and how and to know what the parables mean and to see them from front to back. So, 
Because of the word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you, dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no, no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, uh, being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. And whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. So here Jesus is explaining a little bit better of what Isaiah chapter 5 is saying. And not just that, um, it just makes perfect sense. You know, um, and then we get to the fruits of the Spirit. So I am the vine and you are the branches, and whoever lives in me and I in him, uh, much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a uh, broken off branch, and withers such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire. This is the brimble, you know, when we were talking about the other parable in uh, Jophim's, where it's talking about the different types of trees. There's this tree that grows in Israel that was described um, as a brimble tree, and you cannot make any house. You can't, you can't, you can't use it for anything. It's only good for the fire. And so, throughout the scriptures, this tree is used as an example of the kingdom. This, this, uh, this is Satan's kingdom for now. It's not going to last. And it, the revelations talk about, talks about that. He has a, a short reign. That could be many years. That could be, you know, a day in heaven's like a thousand years. So it could be, and I believe time is almost up. Um, the brimble is it represents Satan's empire, kingdom of darkness. That's what, and going back to that uh, fable that parable we keep going back to it but I, I think maybe there are some that may not understand it clearly I myself sometimes have trouble understanding uh, but it says I'll just read Judges 9 1 through uh, 15 when it was told to Jonathan he went and stood at the top of Mount Gerzim and shouted to them hear me me of Shechem, that uh, God may hear you. One time the trees went forth uh, to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, which we know the olive tree represents um, Israel, and where that wild branch is grafted in. Now the trees in general is talking about the people, okay? And they say, come, reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I leave my fatness, which God um, which God and man are honored, and go to wave over the trees? And then the tree said to the fig tree, uh, which is political Israel, um, they say to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I leave my sweetness, and my good fruit and go to wave over the trees and then the trees said to the vine which is represented as Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is the vine this is spiritual Israel we're grafted in too you come um, and reign over us and the vine the grapevine replied should I leave my new wine which rejoices uh, God and men and go to wave over the trees. Absolutely beautiful. So now um, we're going to go back to John. John 15. Uh, we left off. 
Uh, John 15, 7, if you live in me and abide vitally united to me and my words remain in you, so my words, the word of God is a lamp and a light unto our feet. We should be meditating on the scriptures day and night to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. There is coming a season where it's going to, it's going to be really bad. Um... There's going to be a financial collapse, and it's gonna it's gonna happen around the whole world. Nobody's gonna have a job. Nobody's gonna have food. Is going to be you think food is you know you think buying trying to find things off the shelf is is hard now. You're not even gonna be able to to buy at all until that mark comes. Until you gotta buy, you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. These things are coming, and the Holy Spirit showed me famine in dreams uh, last year around this time and I'm starting to see that things are speeding up and it could actually happen very soon um, when you're you have to realize too prophecy doesn't happen right away sometimes uh, like in Joseph famine what it started to happen within seven years so it, it can be something like that. But we already see that uh, things are looking that way. And I asked the Holy Spirit, should I stock up? Because a lot of people were, you know, saying stock up, stock up, you know, be prepared. But the Holy Spirit showed me something different. He said, be prepared in the Spirit. Be stock up on scriptures. This is your bread. This is your life. Um, the oil in the lamp is having a relationship, exercising with the Spirit day and night, reading the Word of God, having intimacy with Him in the Word. This church is not doing that, and they will be afraid, and they will, they will be led by their fear in receiving this mark, because the mark is going to be something about health and we already see with with what happened with the pandemic it's going to be health it's going to be something in that in that way so just be prepared be stock up on scriptures people keep saying you know stock up on on food do this do that i'm telling you to stock up on scriptures because this is what is going to give you life and discernment and wisdom to make right decisions for when troublous times come because apart from god we can do nothing he is the vine and if we truly believe in him we shouldn't worry about famine or pestilence or plagues because look at we're going to go through what the Israelites went through when they were coming out of Egypt they were a witness to the plagues they saw famine they saw pestilence and plagues but they were not touched God gave them what they needed and then they were in the desert and God fed them in the desert they became be, they started to complain let us not be like that let us be perfectly content when we have a lot and when we have little um and, and not store up for yourself because another parable that the Lord had put on me is um, do I have it? is a parable about covet covetness there's a parable about covetness that Jesus was talking about and of course I don't have it on me let me go grab it really quick because it, it goes with what we're talking about Sorry about that. Um, so Luke, Luke twelve fifteen. Here Jesus is talking about a parable. It's about a vineyard too. Everything is about a vineyard. Okay, so, and he said to them, guard yourself and keep free from all covetousness. So what does covetousness mean? It breaks it up in this uh, translate uh, translation, the Amplified, the um, immoderate desire for wealth 
the greedy longing to have more. Don't store up treasures here on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. So do not be afraid about what you'll eat or what you'll wear or what you'll put on. Uh, because your Heavenly Father knows what you need and He gives you what you need each day. Okay, so then Jesus goes on and says, For a man's life does not consist in and does not derive from possessing overflow abundance or that which is over and above his needs. He doesn't... So if you... We're all guilty of this. We have pantries filled with stuff that we only need what we need for each day. You know, some people like, well, my husband, he goes out to the grocery store every day and we just get what we need, but we still have some things stored up in case we can't go out. But don't over, like you see people go crazy with this. Uh, and I, I was getting into it for a little bit myself. And then I noticed that a lot of the things were expiring and I felt guilty. I mean, this could have went to somebody and here I am I'm storing up and it expires. I don't even get to use it. I waste my money and it could have went to somebody who could have used that, you know? So it's a sin. It really is. And then going into 16, it says, Then he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man was fertile and yielding plentiful. And he was considering... Um, and debating within himself, what shall I do? I have no place in which to gather my, to gather my harvest. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my uh, storehouses and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and produce um, and my, my, pro, my produce and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good things laid up enough for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. So putting your trust in the work of your hands, you know. But God said to him, you fool, uh, this very night uh, the messengers of God will demand your soul of you. Um, and all the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? Whose will they be? Now, some people will say, I'm stocking up in case, you know, when the rapture comes, it will be left behind for, and that's, that's nice intentions, but we can see that do not worry about any of that. Um, we really have to be worried about ourselves, you know, we're supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, you know, we should be worrying about others too, but in the last of that, it says, whose will they be? So you really don't know if it would even end up going to a person at all. You know, if you really want to look at it, when we're caught up, um, the world is going there. The world is going to be so chaotic, so chaotic. It would be a miracle if they're able to find food. And but what is what good is all that, you know? So, anyways, going back to what we're reading, um, let's see, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, continue with John 15, 1 through 10, even though I just read this, I am the true vine, Jesus Christ is the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser, and the branches in me that does not bear fruit uh, stops that bearing. Uh, he cuts away and trims off and takes away and he cleans and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer. So he is the source of, of our fruit and the nutrients that comes from that, the richness. He is that source and he does this continuously so that we can bear more fruit. And to make it more richer and excellent of, of fruit. Um, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you. The teachings have uh, discussed with you. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, being vitally united to 
vitally united to to the vine can you uh, the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me so there is no other path to life other through him and so a lot of these doomsday preppers prepare try to sustain themselves right they try to make life for, for themselves um and not even just the uh, they, but those who uh, put their trust in like man-made products, you know, the works of of the of their hands, you know. Um, this is just something to think about, you know. Um, I am the vine, and you are the branch. Whoever lives in me, and I in him, bear much fruit, abundantly fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from a vital union with me. You can do nothing. If a person does not dwell in me, and he is he is thrown out like a broken branch, a with uh, and withers, such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. And if you live in me, abide, vitally united to me, and my words remain in you. It's very crystal clear. Your words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts. So the, remain, the words of God should be remaining you and on, on your heart. Ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Uh, when you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored. So if you ever wonder how to honor and glorify God, this is how. My Father is honored um, and glorified when you produce and bear fruit and you um and you show yourself approved uh to be true followers of of mine i have loved you just as the father has loved me abide in my love continue in his love with me and if you keep my commandments if you continue to obey my instructions um you will abide in my love and live on it just as I have obeyed my father's commandments and lived on his love. So we're we are to follow him and that's crystal clear in the Amplified version of explaining we have to continue to obey the instruction, instructions, the commands. The word of God is meant for rebuking, correcting, and training to instruct us to help us, the word of God is to help thoroughly equip us for every good work. So, and that is how we abide. Sorry. That's how we abide. Now we're going to get to the fruits of the Spirit. In uh, Galatians 5.23, so what are the fruits of the Spirit? We keep hearing about the fruit. We have to bear good fruit. Part of the fruits of the Spirit is meditating on God's word. You know, to uh, live by his commands, instructions, the whole word of God. And it, and let the spirit lead you. But what are the fruits of the spirit? So Galatians 5, 22 through uh, 23. But the fruit of the spirit, of the Holy Spirit, the work which he, his presence with, within accomplishes, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, even temper, forbearingness, kindness, goodness, belevedness, faithfulness. By the way, belevedness, you know, it's not a word that you use, use usually, so I want to go look it up. You know, Christ, belevedness means to, um, for someone to go and do something nice for you without even expecting anything in return. So Christ did something really nice for us. He he atoned us without expecting anything in return. And that's what we're told to do. To do things not in, in respecting anything in return. To do it out of a good heart. When we do when we do like when we see somebody who is suffering, our hearts should be filled with compassion. If you're struggling with that, because in the last days it says your hearts will be hardened. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've had some moments where my heart was hardened and I saw someone who who needed help. But yet, like, I was just, I was hardened in the heart. And 
I didn't have compassion, but this is what the word says. It will happen. Um, if you're struggling with that, you have to pray for the Lord to soften your heart to true mercy and grace and to be compassionate for one another um, so that you can have these fruits of the Spirit, so you can walk in obedience according to His word. Um, so temperance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, meekness, is not living beyond your means. So we were just reading a little bit more about that in Luke 12. You know, about covetousness. Don't live beyond your means. Be meek. Be humble. Be humble. That's another way of saying meek, meekness is being humble. Be perfectly content with whatever earthly lot you have. That's what Paul says. Be perfectly content with whatever earthly lot you have. Don't try to... Don't try to be like Ahab, okay? There's an Ahab spirit where um, you get depressed and you just lay there. Or don't be like Jezebel who, she's like, well, I can fix this situation myself instead of waiting on God, you know? So we have two different types of spirits at play, I believe, in the last days. Not just Jezebel, I believe Ahab. She is, she is married to Ahab, so we have the Ahab spirit as well. Um... Self-control, self-restraint. So keeping yourself from, from you know, when, you, when someone cuts you off and you, sometimes people don't have self-control and they just automatically react. Learn, learn to restrain yourself. Practice that. It's a practice. It's not going to happen. Like if you're struggling with that, it's a practice. It takes time. Self-restraint. Uh, continence um, against such there is no law that can change uh, that can bring a charge so love is the fulfillment love is the fulfillment of the law doing all of these things it's more than just doing because you can do all these things but not have it in your heart we were reading about that that one king the king of Judah in that other parable we were reading about yesterday, that he he did what was right in the Lord, but his heart was far from the Lord, you know? So you can follow, there's a balance. You can follow all these things, but then your heart can be far from God. So that brings us to the Muslim people. They, they believe doing... Um, you know, acts of kindness can work their way into heaven. So we see in the Old Testament, there's a king who's doing all the things. And the, what is written in the Old Testament, uh, in, the, in the commandments, he's doing all those things, but it, his heart was far from God. And later on, he starts worshiping another god. So, they were talking about both Muslim, Jewish... And Christianity altogether. I don't think it's for anything. Um, the truth is, Jesus Christ is the vine, and we're the branches. We cannot do anything on our own without Him. He gives us the um, the nutrients we need. You know, when we read the Word of God, it it gives us our daily bread, and it gives us um, what we need. If we, uh, if we take a little bit of time out of our day and just read the Word of God, I'm, I'm guaranteeing, because I, I know this for myself, it will change your life. And, you, and things, your perspective will change. Your, everything that you used to, the way that you used to handle a situation will change. So I actually want to continue to read the rest of uh, uh, John 15. So uh, 1511, it says, I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you. So part of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. So we should be joyful. Depression is not something the Lord had given you. So try to try to shake that off of you. Find some things that you're thankful for. You might want to meditate on gratitude. 
scriptures about gratitude. If you're fi- falling into uh, depression, this is a sign that the devil is trying to steal from you and that you need to go look up scriptures for gratitude in Christ. And then get yourself a notebook and write down all the things that God has delivered you from. And and think about that and rejoice. Um, I have told you these things that you may have joy and delight. Your delight may be in you and that your joy and gladness may be of full measure. Full measure. He wants you to feel the full measure and complete and overflowing. So this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. No one has greater love, no one has shown stronger affliction than affection than to lay down his give up his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I command you to do. I do not call you servants, slaves, any longer. For the servant does not know what the, his master is doing. So we know what he's doing. He gives us an insight through um, these parables of what he's doing. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. And I have revealed to you everything that I have learned from him. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed you. I have planted you, um, that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be uh, lasting, and that it may remain, abide, so that whatever you ask, the Father in my name, as uh, presenting all that I am, He may give it to you. This is what I command you, that you love one another. And if the the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would treat you with affection and would love you as its own. And let me tell you, I I have friends and family who say they love me, but I can tell you, I don't feel the love. (laughs) I don't feel it. Um, and I also don't feel like I belong here and probably, but you guys feel the same way too. I just don't feel like I fit in, in this world. Okay. So you're not to feel like that. You're not to like, that's, if you feel like that, there's a reason because you are not of the world. You're not of the world. You are of your children of the most high. And that is why you feel like a displacement. You don't feel like you belong. There's a reason. Because you are not of the world. Um, so if you belong to the world, the, the world would treat you with affection and would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, no longer one with it. But I have chosen, selected you out of the world. Um, And so it's God who chooses. He chooses whom he wants to choose. He draws who he wants to draw. So the world hates you, distastes you. Remember that I told you as servants is, uh, the servant is no greater than his master. It is not superior to him. If you uh, persecute me, they will also persecute you. So if you... If they kept my word and obeyed my teachings, they will also keep and obey yours. But they will do all this to um, inflict all these sufferings on you because of your bearing my name and on my account. For they, so part of the fruit too is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You wonder how to get this fruit. He is how to bear that fruit. Um... Because it says you're bearing my name. You're bearing my name. That's part of bearing the fruit. Um, and everything else kind of falls in place. Like notice how, like if you were to sit down and reflect and, and look at your timeline in Christ, you will see, well, I have definitely transformed. I, I have changed. I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. Because he is, he is the one 
who is pulling you to do what is right. And he is putting his law on your heart and on your mind in the process. So, uh, but they will do all of this to you. They'll inflict all these sufferings on you because of your, of your bearing my name and on my account. For they do not know or understand the one who sent me. Um, and if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, would be blameless. Uh, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me also hates my father. And if I had not done accomplish among them the works which no one else ever did, nobody in the whole entire world has ever done uh, what Jesus has done. Has never... He's, he kept the law perfectly. They would not be guilty of sin. But the fact is, now they have both seen the works and have hated both me and the Father. But this is so that the word written in the law might be fulfilled. They hated me without cause, which is in Psalms 3, uh, 35, uh, 19 and 69, 4. You can see that. Uh, but now we're in 26. But when the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Advocate, the Ancestor, the Strengther, the Standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes, proceeds from the Father, he himself will testify regarding me. But you will also testify and be my witnesses. So going back to um, something I was sharing with you guys. When I feel the the Holy Spirit come into me and I have like a supernatural experience where, you know, it just, it just seems like God's putting up like a divine appointment and it happens out of the blue sometimes. I'm talking to somebody and I feel maybe it's a word of knowledge. I don't know. I'm just learning this as I go. I feel like a witness in the, in, when I go through this. I feel like a witness, like I'm sitting there and the Holy Spirit is just doing his work through me and I'm a witness. And that's what the word of God says. It says, but you also will testify and be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. So let me know if you guys have ever felt that, like a witness, a true, like you feel the Holy Spirit come in and it's like he takes over and speaks through your mouth and you're just sitting there witnessing it like is this really happening kind of like that that happened to me once and I just wanted to know if that's ever happened to any of you guys so the I felt his presence and felt a peace, yes. And it's, I wish it can last all day long. And I try, I've try. i tried to seek that and I actually have gotten to spirit experience it all day long for a season. And you'll go through seasons, you'll go through seasons. You will have seasons where it's like, it feels like a desert, you know? You'll have seasons where it seems like every, it's so fruitful, but then you'll have seasons where it just feels like you need more, and you just keep seeking. The, the key is to persevere, to keep persevering. Um, let me see if I can find my, one of the scriptures I was meditating on. Just keep seeking. You know, sometimes, well, last night I'll just share a prayer. Um, lately I've been feeling like, you know, Jesus says he's at the door. Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to bust in the door myself. Never mind him being on the door. I'm trying to get inside the, the door. 
and I sometimes feel like the door the door is shut very tight and I'm I'm trying so hard to bust open that door but what that is 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 a, a spiritual warfare going on something is trying to keep me in high worship something is trying to keep me from uh, is trying to steal my joy you know sometimes I don't know if that's happened to you guys um, I've also been getting uh, dreams from the enemy recently and these dreams are really annoying me because I, I want to have dreams from God but so, sometimes I get dreams from the enemy and I'll just share one recent dream that I had from the enemy and it's, I've been having this dream for a while so it's hard to say if it's really truly from the enemy you know I, I don't know you can let me know what you think um, I'm in a house so in this dream I'm in a house and in this house uh, there's only there's not there's a safe area where I can be and in this house it's, this is the only safe place and well there's another safe place but it's on the other side of the house the rest of the house is evil there's some kind of demonic thing going around in that the rest of the house and I'm stuck on this one side of the house and I really want to get to the other side but it's really hard for me to get to the other side with this strong demonic like it is very fearful very fearful when I've had this dream I feel um, I feel a strong presence of fear and I'm like this is definitely not of God uh, this is this is something from the enemy um, but I've had this dream before where I'm trying to get to the other side of the other part of the house but I can't because there's a strong demonic presence and it's to end I feel like a discernment saying do not go any further do not go any further this this side of the house isn't safe it's really hard for me to explain it because I keep having this dream over and over again and I'm like, why do I keep having this dream over and over again? I remember having this.